no time. No, no, no. Hi. Hey. Hey, everybody. Remember last week when I hit the go live button and there was five seconds of dead silence? V's back. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Hey, Internets. It's Jake from Mini Terrain Domain. And this is The Dawnbringers, Season 6, Wild Beyond the Witchlight. And this is Episode 3, Once Upon a Mime. I will fill you all in with a recap, and we'll play some Dungeons & Dragons in just a couple of moments. First, we are going to get through a couple announcements. Uh, And first up, um, I want to call out our sponsor. Dawnbringers is sponsored now, if you look up here, and uh, it's kind of hard to see because it's black on black, but I'm wearing a Session Zero baseball cap that you can get at uh our new dawnbringer sponsor i'm gonna put mtd zero in the chat there it is nope that is not right i'm gonna that's the code uh there we go follow that link that's our affiliate link to session zero clothing um we are super excited to uh to have partnered up with them uh for this season of the dawnbringers you follow that affiliate link head over there check out everything uh i know ryan recently restocked the store there are lots of great shirts and stickers and hats and and sweatshirts and stuff over there find what you like and use code mtd0 when you check out and you'll get 10 percent off of your order and you help the channel out at the same time so please do check out session zero clothing uh, let's see. We also do have channel sponsor, Talon and Claw. Uh, you can use code, um, or, or rather type in MTD Claw in the chat. This will pop up periodically. Check out Talon and Claw, makers of fine wooden dice accessories such as the dice vaults Katie's showing. Um, and when you go to their store, use code MTD Claw when you check out, get 10% off of your order. Tell them MTD sends you. Uh, we also want to shout out our good friend Keel over at Run Right Play. Keel is curating a community of collaboration. Um, it's he's just a wonderful human being from the other from the southern hemisphere. Uh, we love and adore him. Uh, check out the amazing community that he's got over there. Um, that's exclamation point R W P. I'm realizing Jeremy's usually the one that puts in all these codes when i'm doing announcements oh, yeah uh which is means he's he's falling behind because he's in chat yeah, he's just he's not doing chat. it well, yeah he he's just not it. doing it he's on vacation he, it. he just got it he's on vacation uh I so i mean which brings me to why jeremy's screen is blank jeremy's not here tonight um but that's okay uh we will do our best uh without tiny talmud um the uh let's see uh ted i believe you have something that is of a very time sensitive nature that you would like to tell everybody about in, indeed in case you haven't been on you know dawnbringers uh game for a while uh today is not only the last day but we are down to like the last 15 16 minutes for the mage forge kickstarter if you want to get access to those 250 tarot sized magic item cards one of which is garrett de from this very game uh, you can go ahead and head over to Kickstarter, look for the Mage Forge, and go back it. You got to do it now, or you might not be able to get one. So go check it out, and I appreciate it. Thanks. Absolutely, check that out. It's an honor and a privilege to have something that was a part of this very game be a part of that wonderful new product, and I can't wait to see it. Um, I should say again, I've I've <laughs> gotten a sneak peek of the artwork, but um yeah so uh i think one of the last things i want to talk about real quick is if you look up above v and dan's head you'll see the domain dice that uh are a way that you the viewers can have a little bit of an influence on our game all you got to do is subscribe resubscribe gift a subscription uh, or you can share 500 bits uh, you can tip five dollars or tip through the kofi and this will happen uh such as the dice on ice uh subscription magical butterflies will bring new domain dice 
which will allow the non-bringers to do things such as re-roll, make me re-roll, all the way up to a super critical, which is a um, spending five dice to turn any hit into an automatic double max damage super crit. Um, they're all kids right now at a carnival, so I don't see a lot of use for that at the moment. But something tells me if there's a way that it can be done, they will do it. Um, with that, uh, the last thing I want to mention before we get going, sorry, when I say that they're children in the game, I also mean that my players are adult children. I'm desperately trying not to read our side children. chat. Oh, yeah. We are absolutely children. 100%. <laughs> No. Uh, myself included. Behaving badly. <laughs> myself included. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, the last thing I want to mention before we start playing is, of course, the message that we tell before every game, uh, which is super important, and that is that you matter. Your presence on this earth makes a difference, whether or not you believe it. It can be a struggle. Uh, many different things can be, can be challenging you. Uh, first off, it's okay to not be okay. Uh, but you do not need to struggle alone. If you are looking for help or you know somebody that's looking for help at any time, you can type exclamation point help in the chat. Um, it'll show up on screen and in the chat periodically. Uh, we, we share a link for find a helpline.com. It's a very simple URL. Um, we encourage you to bookmark it for yourself or a friend later on. All you got to do is put in where you are located in the world and hit enter and a bunch of wonderful um, resources, uh, a variety of resources will show up. Text message services, phone services, websites, you name it. Um, so please do check that out. Um also, one final thing, uh, this is just, just me saying this, but I think I speak for a lot of people when I say this. Uh, this is a TTRP GIFs slash RoboGoblin Stan uh, stream. Um, I just wanted to say that. We stand Robo. So, um, with that, I think it's time to play some Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. They headed into the carnival as adults, but upon turning in their tickets at the ticket booth, butterflies swarmed upon the Dawnbringers, and when they left, the butterflies left, what was left behind were children or childlike versions of themselves, including our own clockwork wizard fig who is now about approximately 18 inches tall i think uh and has a little clockwork hermes that when wound up just tick, 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 uh runs He's back so and cute. forth and a little uh a little stuffy of uh uh themselves it appears um and uh little tiny rollo uh, who is, if possible, even smaller, I think also has a little, um, uh, ha has, has a, a littler, but, uh, still has a owl bear, uh, owl bear cublet. an owl bear cublet. Um, and, uh, that's a wintry owl bear cublet, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, and, uh, drown while still a child like drown uh manages to be about five feet tall still i mean he is a goliath uh and then of course the uh little our, our little dwarves telmud and thorgarn and nobody saw cantriel because one of the uh bubbles from the the bubble pop teapot uh captured cantriel and cantriel has been slowly flying around the top um flying overhead uh and i will say cantriel that as you've been sort of flying back and forth and other patrons have been flying in these uh bubble pops bubble pop teapot rides i will give you all uh a view of the carnival um 
and where you've been flying around all over uh, this place, there are a couple of places that you've noticed that your friends are because surprise, surprise, your friends have, uh, are doing basically a three way split. Uh, so first up, you saw that drown and Rolo, uh, with Talmud in tow, uh, headed all the way up here to the, uh, to the carousel. Uh, Thorgarden was following along but got lost in the crowd and wound up wandering up off this way instead of going into that area. Meanwhile, um, or sorry, Talmud, Talmud's not up there. Talmud's down here by, uh, the Pixie Kingdom, just outside of it, across from the Hall of Illusions, riding on Talmud's shoulders, where they were just talking with one of the carnival hands, uh, and you saw that they all went into the Hall of Illusions here briefly uh, before coming out and taking off in all different directions. So Cantriel, you're, you're finally getting control of this bubble um, that you've been in uh, for the last little while. Where would you direct yourself? To any of your other party members or to somewhere else entirely within the carnival? Uh, definitely be heading towards where Rolo and Drown had gone. All right. Um, so you're heading off towards, uh, this area up <clears throat> by the carousel. Um, as you're doing so, you kind of pass over where the big top is. And from your vantage point, you can see behind the big top where, uh, a bunch of brightly colored wagons, the very, some of the very same wagons you saw flying in on, uh, winged horse and winged fox uh, that were part of the setup of the carnival. Uh, they're all set up behind this big top. And you see a few of the the carnival hands, um, an errant clown here or there wandering around. Uh, from your vantage point, you can see that it's basically like a staff area back there. Um, you can also see as you're heading towards the carousel um, that... Uh, Thorgarn appears to have wandered towards where some midway games are and up towards the, the little lake um, to the northwest. Uh, and you can see just beyond uh, the carousel, you actually see some very large dragonflies flying around from lily pad to lily pad, and people are riding on them uh, not far from there. Um, so you're starting to get control of this and you're uh, in just a few moments, you'll be able to settle down. Uh, I'll let you know when that is as um, we kind of resolve how these other things are happening. Um, meanwhile, Fig, as uh, the Witchlight Carnival hand that you were speaking to, um, as they turn and leave, uh, you um you are near where the pixie kingdom is uh the entrance is a little little further to the south uh from where you are uh make me a perception check fig <laughs> i got a zero <laughs> no. fig you're not entirely sure what is happening because you did not see the pixie that stuck their head out of the bushes and poked Talmud in the rear end with their wand. And you see, you, you didn't see the little spray of pixie dust to your eyes, Fig. You are growing very large compared to Talmud. As you were on Talmud's shoulders, Talmud, his voice, he's just going, oh, you're getting heavy, you're getting heavy, you're getting heavy, you're getting heavy, I'm out. and his voice gets higher and higher, and your feet touch the ground, and you look down and you see that you are absolutely towering over Talmud. Talmud is now the size of Hermes, who just goes tick, 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 running past. What do you do? So, 
I think a very first uh, Fig thinks he's growing bigger. <laughs> so he thinks he's he he like kind of stands up and he starts looking and then but he doesn't see that anyone is growing smaller. So he finally looks down. He sees Talmud as small as his stuffy of himself and Hermes. And so he picks up Talmud and he picks up Hermes and he has this little stuffy. So he's holding like these three little like toys almost in his hand. And he looks around quickly. He's going to try and find some kind of bag or satchel or something. I'm like going to bag. say <laughs> that uh, you the most prevalent thing that you find uh, here would be a white and red striped cardboard box that formerly held. In fact, there are a few pieces of popcorn still in it. It is a totally a little popcorn carton. That's I just, Jeremy just said that in the chat too. a popcorn bag. So Fig takes this popcorn bag and he finds probably some string that he's, kept with him from collecting everything and he ties it to the front of himself so he has almost like it's almost like a little like fanny pack that he has kind of up front (laughs) and he places his little stuffy talmud and hermes all in this little popcorn bag so that the three of them are kind of facing out and then with these very tiny lumbering steps he starts waddling his way down the uh, the pathway. Not really sure where to go, uh, but he's he's wandering. And um, actually, I think he he's going to try and head towards the the swans because that's what the lady had said where the kenku was that they're looking for. So okay, he's going to head in that direction. All right, I'm going to have you fig make an investigation check. Uh, 13. Okay. The real question that you'll have to ask yourself in the meantime, while we go over to the others is would fig be distracted by some of the midway games on the way there and which one? So, uh, we are going to cut over to, um, I imagine as we see each of these things happening, uh, we kind of see it from Cantrell's viewpoint and we zoom in on fig and everything happening there. And then we kind of pull back and Cantrell's turning her attention, moving through this bubble. And then we, we see Cantrell as you approach closer uh, to the carousel where you see very quickly, the carousel is turning around and around and around. And you see every time it comes around, uh, there's all of these unicorns that are on the carousel and you see drown moving one way and uh rollo moving the other and there's a portly looking uh halfling gentleman trying to evade them uh who has done so by climbing on the back of one of these unicorns and appears to be trying to ride it away as fast as possible of course through your viewpoint this is more like a zeotrope than anything because you just see these quick flashes of them as it's passing by quickly and you're approaching. Um, so you get close to the ground and automatically your bubble just goes and you just drop the last few inches to the ground. What does little Cantriel look like? She has, her eyes are big and alarmingly like pale green orbs as it is but they're even more so so now. And she has very round, full cherubic cheeks and this long blonde hair that's sort of braided in little different bits and pieces chaotically, some with like ribbons interwoven with it and then others have beads in it. And she's very confident in herself and she kind of tosses her hair back haughtily and, you know, brushes off her dress, but her dress is extremely elaborate. There's ribbons, there's ruffles, there's lace. It's very fussy and very fluffy. And it even has like ruffly sleeves and multi-tiers to the skirt. And she has these very pretty white patent leather shoes. It's it's the type of thing she almost looks like a doll. 
as she's running around and she's got her little butterfly wings on behind her. <laughs> she's re- okay, looking that was around cool. and getting herself ready. I have butterfly wings. <clears throat> <laughs> that was cool. I did not nice. expect that. Um, that took a, just... that scrubbed away the image of Annabelle that I was getting in my mind as you were talking <laughs> about the little doll. <laughs> Oh, no, not that doll. Different like. doll. Different doll. Very different, different doll. doll. That's Ravenloft. <laughs> <Right. clears throat> All right. So you begin to approach, but the carousel is spinning much too quickly uh, for you to do anything at the moment. Um, and we cut to on the carousel now uh, as it's spinning around rapidly. Rolo has just reached the the uh, unicorn uh, that this halfling is on and drown is standing right there in front of them. Um, And the individual just admitted that the reason he was following you was because he saw you talking to the mime and he was afraid he was going to try to get you to get his voice voice back. He said, because I have his voice and I have no intention of giving it back. And I and I believe Drown said, "Get him!" And that, grabbed that him. That is yes, that was accurate. <laughs> and um, Rolo is going to bless her heart. She she does not comprehend that she is not gettimable, and so she like <laughs> pounces onto him and like clings to his back. <clears throat> I'll and basically just ruffles his shirt. Go ahead, just because I want to see what's going to happen. Go ahead and make a grapple check. Okay. Strength at l- athletics check. <laughs> I've seen Rolo's stats, so I know this is funny. It's a 13. Okay. Uh, and I, I will remind you that I think you have bardic inspiration from when you went to go talk to the halfling woman, and I don't think you ended up using it. Correct. So, okay, so that's So what? if you wanted to throw on that, you could, or just hang on or to it. D6. It's a D6, yeah. Yeah, let's throw that on. Why not? That's plus four, so 17. Okay. Nice. <laughs> well, that beats my seven. Uh, <laughs> so you you managed to sort of <clears throat> catch him off guard, and you're sort of pinning him. Um, um, her, if, if you're okay with it, she, she jumps on his shirt and kind of does that realizes it's not working and she climbs up onto his head and wraps her wings around his face. <laughs> yes. And your wings are butterfly wings. Cause they sort of melded into your own, uh, erd wings. Yes. Um, so I, I would, I, I would say it almost looks like he's wearing some kind of bizarre mask because as your wings wrap around the natural coloration and circles of the wings go right over his eyes uh, so you are met with quite the bizarre sight drown. Um, uh, but at the same time, this is happening. Um, you hear what sounds like <laughs> coming from the halfling. I need you to make a constitution saving throw drown. Okay. Oh, no. <sighs> yeah. Not- that's super amazing. 14. There is a uh, cloud of gas that visibly rises and sort of engulfs you. Um, and for a moment, your blinks are longer. And you feel yourself getting very tired. And then the carousel begins to slow down and it's that sort of shifting of gears that kind of jostles you and you snap out of it as you are not put to sleep by magical uh, sleeping gas. Oh, Oh, good. What are you doing, Drown? Uh, I'm going to like grab him by the lapels and uh, seeing that Rolo has got... uh, her wings wrapped around his face. Is he like basically blindfolded by her wings at this point? Yes. Yeah. Very good. Uh, so I'm going to like start checking his pockets, see if I can, you know, find the voice, whatever that looks like. 
<laughs> well, a couple of things happen for both of you in this moment. Rolo, you realize as you wrap your wings around his face, your wings aren't quite wrapping. And as you're just grappling his head and face, the face feels weird. The head feels weird. It doesn't feel like hair. It feels like feathers. And where there should be a nose, you're feeling a beak. Mm -hmm. And drown, as you grab the lapels, your hands actually kind of go through the lapels. And you grab some cloth, but also you grab a fistful of feathers as well. And you hear this sort of, no! And... All right, all right. Just stop accosting me. You've got me surrounded. I'm not accosting you. I'm hugging your head. It is a very aggressive hug. Right. It is how I show love. <laughs> very aggressively. This is really true. Okay, give us the voice. Get the kettle. Unhand me and kettle I will. Whistle. Kettle steam. Steam whistle. What was your name? It is kettle steam. Kettle steam. That's the one. And uh, as the carousel begins slowing down, Cantriel, you see Drown and Rolo just grappling hold of this halfling man. And you see halfling man, halfling man, halfling man, bird man, bird man, bird man, bird man. And Drown, Drown is like just roughing this thing up. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give, give me the voice. As... The two of you see uh, Kettle Steam um, in his true form now, uh, or rather her true form, as she drops the magical disguise uh, to reveal herself. Does she have a set of butterfly wings, or are those, like, counterfeit looking? Because <laughs> the image looks counterfeit looking. <laughs> she does indeed um, have butterfly wings. Okay. Um, but they were hidden sort of uh, in the whole disguise. Yep. Um, as it begins to slow down, Drown and Rolo, as you're holding this Kenku woman um, on this unicorn... Uh, you see, as the carousel begins slowing down, a diminutive little girl who looks suspiciously like your Aladrin friend. Hi, Candrio. You hear, hi, Candrio. <laughs> as it slowly, and it does just sort of go... Is there a reason why you're holding the uh, the bird lady? Captain? Yep. the mime voice. Bird lady stole a mime's voice. Trying to get it back. Stole the voice. Yep. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, who's the mime? Uh, Candlefoot. He's at the Hall of Illusions. Why are you talking more? Hmm? You're talking way more than you normally do. Uh, I don't know. I always just, you know. I talk when I got to talk, right? No, you never talk. You never talk in full syllables or sentences. Let You're distracting me. Where's the voice? <laughs> Usually in the voice box. <gasps> box. Got it. I'm going to look for a box. <laughs> Unhand me. It is very rude to go digging through my personal belongings. It's rude to steal people's voices. And I mess up their proposals. And why do you hate romance? This carnival is terrible for it. That's two marriages that have been broken up before they even got started. And two? we just got here. I had nothing to... Two? That's, that's not the point. Don't try to change the subject. The uh, Rolo, girl. keep her eyes covered. Okay. All right. I'll kind of let go. Step back. Get the voice. Slowly. And okay. it goes. Okay. Your feathers are very soft. They are very soft. Question, why are you taking people's voices? Hold on, my D D Beyond just went haywire on me one second. Uh -oh. There's a lot coming uh, at it. It's, not allowed. It's all right. 
<laughs> Hold on. It, it just started like navigating the page away from where I was. Oh no. Um, yeah. Don't want that. Like, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to read what this says. Um, listen, I want to speak with the owners of the carnival, but they won't give me the time of day. There's something going on and I know they know what it is. What do you mean? What do you mean something going on? There is something strange. Listen. You are children, so you probably don't fully understand how the world works. Uh, Rich, not, not exactly children. We're just sort of more, um, in appearance mode. We are the Dawnbringers. Things are real weird here, okay? Like, you don't have a monopoly on things not being what they seem, so... As Rolo says, we are the Dawnbringers, one of her hands comes up and lifts just one side ah. of Rolo's butterfly wing... And you just see her eye peeking out as she kind of looks around at you. You are the Dawnbringers? So you've heard oh, of us. You've heard of us. I have heard of you. Great. Then, uh, but you're so much smaller than I've heard. Awesome. Graham kind of like puffs up his chest a little bit. <laughs> you are small. Magic of the carnival. Yeah, that's probably something to do with all the, the, the fame magic happening around here. Um, that's probably why I feel a little weird. Anyway, not important. It's, it is very important. I, many years ago, I made a pact with a very powerful arch fay who is a ruler in a Feywild domain called Prismere. Oh. But something's not right. And I don't, I can no longer sense Evangeline the way I used to. Wait, who what? Say the name again. Evangeline. Yeah, How we do you know, know Evangeline? Her? I just said she's a very powerful arts fae. Wait, she's you made a pact with Evangeline? I did. She's my patron. Holy crap. Our boat is a warlock patron. <clears throat> Did you just call Evangeline a boat? How rude. Sorry, sorry. I'm, I apologize. Ship. <laughs> <laughs> that got me, Dan. <laughs> <clears throat> you... I have no idea what you're talking about, but this this just right, makes well, my case. All right, you want more information? Very quick, TLDR of the whole kitten caboodle. Evangeline, yes, Archfey, totally makes sense. Somehow got imbued into a ship. Uh, ship came to us, magical ship, wonderful ship, took us places, everything like that. Something's happened to the ship. We need to help Evangeline. You're trying to help Evangeline. You said something feels off. Well, something is off with her, so maybe we should start working together. Yeah, we are, we're actually here to help save Evangeline and some of our other crew. So, Also, why on earth would you make a deal with a notch fade? Well, I mean, there's all kinds of reasons. You, well, I mean, like, yeah, you're from here, right? a wise right? thing to do. But yes, and that's just it. You're never supposed to make a deal with anyone. She is the source of my power. Right. I. How's your power lately? It comes and goes. That's why... Mm. That's why I've been struggling to talk to the owners of the carnival. I figured What do they have to do with Evangeline? They know something is going on, but mm. they won't let me have an audience with them. So I figured if I could steal the mime's voice and disrupt his proposal and cause a bit of trouble here and there, they would have to talk to me. So you made a nuisance of yourself. Right. I'll get that's your attention. Them, that that makes them really probably not want to listen to or deal with you, right? They don't have a choice. If I have Candlefoot's voice, and I refuse to give it back until they give me an audience, is Candlefoot that important? 
He's a part of the carnival. Sure. Who's um, Candlefoot? Candlefoot's the mime. You we took a mime's to. voice? He right? sounds like well, this. He wasn't a mime before. He's, or maybe he was. He's always been a mime as far as I know. Oh, he just could talk, what mimes chose are supposed not to. to do, right? Yeah. What? What? Is, sorry, uh, we didn't mean to cut you off there. What does he sound like? This. I mean, this is his voice that I'm speaking with. Oh, you're using his voice. Well, it's the only way I could really talk to you like this. I was wondering. Oh. Right. Okay. Kenku. Sure. I. Um. Listen. I will give you the mime's voice if you can help me to find an audience with Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. Well, look, since I, apparently they know what's up with Evangeline, that's why we're here too. So yeah, deal. I heard them the last time I was talking. I was trying to get their attention. I overheard them. Okay. And she goes, she kind of changes her posture and you hear coming out of her mouth this time a completely different voice as she says, Someone is going to find out about this. They'll shut us down. And immediately you hear as the posture changes again, We agreed to this pact. Our hands were forced, but our eyes were open. We let the hourglass coven take what it wants. And in return, we stay in business. That is what you want, right? <laughs> See? They know something. Okay, so something is happening to Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. And so they are ignoring... Other things that are happening, yes? Maybe they... I have an idea. Following As an act of goodwill, and she reaches inside her robes and she pulls out what looks like a little straw figure wearing scraps of gray cloth. And there is a length of string tied around the throat. <gasps> when I, when I undo this string, the mime's voice will go back to him. I think I would appreciate if you do that. I will. I think the best thing. I think the best thing chance that you have of getting a getting Mr. Witch or Mr. Light to talk to you. I could help you steal his watch. Okay. <laughs> Why would that work? He has a magic watch that is how he runs the carnival. Oh. If we That's steal it and tell him we will only give it back to him. If he talks to us, he'll have to talk to us. Why don't we see if he'll talk to us first? And if that don't work, then we do that. <sighs> you are the Dawnbringers, or so you say. You kind of look like the descriptions. I will give you the benefit of the doubt. And she holds up the straw doll and she takes hold of the string and I hope that you Okay. We will we will get this meeting, and <clears throat> we will find out what is happening to Evangeline. You, you don't see anything 
happen in particular. But as as the string is untied, there's just sort of a and a little ruffle of the the Rolo's wings and drown. There's a little like puff of air that seems to blow past you. Cantriel, your hair sort of and Thorgarn, you are wandering around in the midway. You see the lake and the swan ride off in the distance. And you begin to hear a commotion from behind you as people start going, what, what is that? Who is that? I thought they weren't supposed to talk. As you see the mime Candlefoot running back and forth heading through the midway as he's just running up to people and shaking their hands vigorously it is so nice to meet you i am candlefoot the mime hi okay i gotta go now hello it is so nice to meet you i'm candlefoot the mime i can talk as candlefoot is racing along telling just about anybody who will listen to him uh, with his newfound uh, or newly returned voice, um, what do you do? I'll try to go up to him and you know stop him in his tracks. Hello, I'm Candlefoot the Mime. I can talk. Oh, uh, I know I, you. Yeah, I'm I'm Thorgarn. Um, so, how'd you get your voice back? I was just standing there outside the Hall of Illusions and all of a sudden I thought a fly had flown into my mouth and when I started coughing I, I begged uh, the begged my pardon to the people standing next to me and I realized I begged my pardon aloud and then I I couldn't stop myself so did, did you lose it or did you just misplace it because I misplace things all the time I was certain that it was just gone. I, but may, maybe you're right. This is something that I would love to talk to at length with you. But I have to find Palasha. Okay, good luck. Um, I, got, I got to go find my friends. They're around here. Okay, somewhere. you and your friends are invited to the wedding. Assuming she says yes. Okay, I hope she says yes. I do even put thought into this. I'll see you, Thorgon! And he runs about ten feet away from you. Hello! I am Candlefoot the Mime. I can talk! So is the crowd dispersed at all? Uh, they've made way for Candlefoot as he's run through, so there is a little more room uh, to navigate the crowd, yes. Let me see if I can find Drown powers to it's actually a pretty decent role so that's going to be a 17 for perception um yeah i i'll i'll say a um there's a uh, an orc family walking by a mother and father and they've got three little orc children uh that have their faces painted up with butterflies and other things um, and they're laughing and, and, uh, they appear to have just gotten, um, some snow cones from, uh, a set of, uh, gnomish snow cone, uh, purveyors. Um, but as this, this orc family sort of parts, um, and you see their, uh, the butterfly wings that they wear on their back sort of flutter, uh, you have a clear shot over to where the carousel is and you see drown and Rolo a Kenku and a Cantriel all outside there. And uh, trundling in that direction. All right. So that takes us to, as you head out through there, we see the same orc family moving through the midway. And as they pass by, we see a tiny little clockwork child wandering back and forth they've got their little popcorn bundle inside leaned up against the the stuffy version of fig uh with a tiny wind up uh hermes just kind of going tick, 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 tick. 
is tiny Talmud kicked back, feet up on the edge of the box, holding the biggest in his hands piece of popcorn, just and then licking all of his fingers, reaching down on the box and pulling out another massive piece of popcorn. Ah, I can stay here all day. Fig. All around you, you see a variety of uh, activities. Um, you see at uh, one of the booths, you see that there are a bunch of what look like uh, um, golden rings. People are, are trying to throw golden rings over a wooden rabbit with a unicorn horn. Uh, you see in another place, there is, a, to you, a very giant cyclops with a seemingly unblinking eye. And people keep taking their turns trying to outstare the cyclops. There's a small stage set aside where some people are reciting gnomish poetry and being judged. Uh, there's another area where people are wrestling goblin. There's a very weird looking chicken dinosaur creature in a cage and people are attempting to guess how many feathers it has. There's another area where little fairy dragons are flitting about and people are running around trying to catch them by the tail. Do any of these activities catch Fig's attention? Oh, yes. <laughs> I think what catches Fig's attention the most is the very strange looking feathered creature that uh, is in a cage and people are trying to guess the feathers. So Fig like waddles over and is trying to like, I imagine the cage is kind of set so that he's trying to get a look into it. Like he's trying to see beyond the crowd that is kind of encircled around it so he's like pushing on knees as he's like trying to weave his way in to see this this creature yeah and I imagine you sort of have to um, you have to uh, take a um Oh my gosh, sorry. This I don't know what is going on with uh D D Beyond. Maybe it's my something's wrong with my mouse. It just keeps scrolling all over the place. Uh you you find little bits of like popcorn buckets and and uh maybe move a little bit of a rock here and there, and you kind of make a little makeshift stack of things that you can sort of clamber up until you're looking into um this uh into this cage um and you see this this very bizarre looking um very bizarre looking bird like creature uh that is uh just kind of squawking strutting about back and forth um and uh where did it go um there is a i apologize i'm i'm struggling with this uh interface um and a woman one of the witch light hands is a is a, an older woman uh human looks to be um maybe in her uh late 50s early 60s um she sees you and she kind of comes around the edge of this cage. Ah, birds of a feather. How about feathers of a bird? Step right up and guess how many feathers festoon this fiendish fowl. You will get three tries to guess the number of feathers on one of these cockatrice. Would you like to try? It'll simply cost you a single punch of your ticket. 
You see Fig has clambered up and is like looking wide-eyed up at this bird creature. And you see he looks at this woman, looks back at the bird, and then nods and gives, reaches into the popcorn bag, kind of rustling around a little bit until uh, (laughs) he brings out this very, I think, very buttery, (laughs) <laughs> boiled ticket <laughs> stained and and hands it to the to the woman she reaches out she's got these uh fingerless gloves and she seems not at all um put off by it um she just kind of takes it by a corner and uh holds up her uh punch there you go you get three guesses what is your guess you can make a, uh, I need you to make a uh, intelligence check. Great. It's 15. What do you guess? So you see Fig. This is such a long and very painful process as Fig climbs down of this little makeshift ladder moves the ladder, climbs up, looks at the bird from a different angle, climbs back down just to get like a 360 view of this bird. Um, And as he's looking, he puts his hand to his head, scratches at something that isn't there, but something that he's seen uh, maybe uh, Talbot or Thorgard do a lot like when they're thinking and three hundred and twenty seven it's almost as if you counted every single feather on the cockatrice but you very clearly missed a few. Sorry, that is incorrect. Two more guesses remain. See Fig kind of very confident in his answer, looks at it again. You make another intelligence check. Um, Talmud from is is sort of peering over this little popcorn thing and looking and you just hear this tiny voice going seven no eight nine um talmud is trying to help so you can roll with advantage okay good because i rolled a two. <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> i rolled a four. Oh no i doubled my aunt my, my. um that's a six can I use a domain die? You certainly can. You have 173 of them. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Woo! I got is, a 20. <laughs> accidentally turned off the wrong one. Um, I'll get that sorted out here. Uh, so you take another stab and... And I imagine Talmud's throwing out very singular numbers. Um, And uh, on a whim, you add the last number Talmud said to your guess. And the woman turns and looks at you and crouches down. That is exactly correct. You win a prize. I would like you to roll a D8. Fig begins to hop from one foot to the other, just very excited. Uh, three. Okay. Um, the woman looks at you and says, It is your very lucky day. Turns around into the, the uh, area at the entrance to this uh, game and reaches back and pulls a very colorful 
uh, little packet. Um, it's just a little pouch folded over paper, but it's been uh, decorated to be very colorful. There's some kind of an illusion cast on it that you can see what looks like a little pixie on it with its wings fluttering. And it occasionally uh, holds a finger up and then goes and blows kisses at you that look like little little d dust flying out. This is your very own pixie dust. Uh, you do have a tiny packet of pixie dust that will allow you as an action to sprinkle it on yourself or somebody else within five feet of you. And you or they will gain a flying speed of 30 for one minute. Nice. When the time ends, you will fall safely to the ground, taking no damage. As uh, you take your prize and begin to um, continue on your way moving through the carnival, uh, what would you do? Before he goes away, something that I forgot that he, that there's also another, actually, let me just check one thing. Um, something that he also put into uh, his little popcorn pouch was that um, replica that earth replica of Mr. Witch that uh, the lady had described to him. Oh yeah. So he has that and he's going to take it out and show it to the lady. Oh, that is a very wonderful likeness of Mr. Witch. Where? That's not a prize from Mark one of our booths where did you get that have you seen mr witch big shakes his head where is he mr witch is a very busy individual he runs this entire carnival I would imagine he is keeping himself quite busy attending to the needs of the carnival in the staff area. But I'm afraid you won't be able to go in there, little person. Fig, you can see that his shoulders kind of slump as he kind of tucks the little figurine back into his popcorn bowl. Um but nods uh, and then waves goodbye and goodbye to this, this, the bird as he waddles back onward. What is your passive perception? It's an eight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as you go waddling away, you don't notice that the, uh, the woman tending the guess the feathers on the cockatrice. Um, she kind of walks over to one of the other booths and whispers something to one of the other carnival hands. And they kind of watch you go. And then she walks back, but that carnival hand kind of walks over to somebody else and says something to somebody else. As we cut back over to, uh, the carousel where Thorgarn is just catching up to the rest of you as uh kettle steam has just given you the voice of Candlefoot. What are you all doing? So I will run up to, to drown. Like, ah, hey guy, um yeah, mission's done. Uh the the, the not talking yep. guy found his voice. Yep. We got it all sorted out. No, he, he found it. Oh, you saw him? Yeah. And he's talking okay? Yeah. Perfect. He's, he said he just misplaced it. This is, this yep. is, and she kind of points and like pokes the head of the Kenku. This is the person who had it. I'm confused. We found her, and there's something going on. She knows Evangeline. Didn't we have something to do here about Evangeline? Yeah. Yep. Evangeline may be in trouble, and apparently the people from the carnival, Mr. Witch and Mr.
Mr. Light might be able to help. Okay. Uh, all right. We're all back together. We need no, to go we need find. To and... we... Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we need to find Fig and Talmud. Yes. Uh, let's check near the food. Oh, that reminds me, Cantrio. We all got snow cones, but you were stuck in a bubble. Do you want a snow cone? They're really good. No, I'm good. And knowing Fig, I don't think they'd want to go for food. Yeah, but Talmud's with them, so. Yeah. Fair enough. So you're going to go in search of the others. Yep. All right. I would like each of you to make an investigation check. Oh, good. As you're doing that. Ooh, dirty 20. Fig. 21. Oh, wow. As you're doing that, Fig, make me a uh, perception check. So Drown will kind of like basketball palm Rolo off of the Kenku's head and pop her up on his shoulders so she can get a better look around. Uh, 13. <laughs> so does my two on investigate give anyone disadvantage? <laughs> <laughs> I think the others did well enough um, that uh, that no, you won't cause any problem. Uh, Fig, you said you got a 13 on yeah. your perception check. Uh, so as you're wandering through uh, avoiding getting stepped on by the many different people and kind of wandering around um you notice that some of the witch like carnies are uh, watching you. And you notice there's one off to your side. And as you kind of, as somebody passes in front of your vision, he seems a little bit closer. And then you see a, a woman off on the other side. And she's kind of pacing alongside you and getting steadily closer. And you see a third one watching you. What are you doing as these these witch light carnies or carnival hands are getting closer to you? Feeling very small. Fig. I imagine that if he sees the first one, he just starts like walking just like a little bit faster. Okay, what's your speed? It is 30 feet. Okay. But I feel like it's not like no. mechanically. <laughs> I feel like it's not that fast, <laughs> but um, because he can't, I, he just can't run. So he he he's like waddling, and then he sees another one coming in, and then just like waddle, 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 and then he sees the third one, and this at this point he's like kind of starting to like flail his arms a little bit trying to give himself momentum <laughs> as he's waddling as fast as he can um make a dexterity uh saving throw the nine you notice that as you are trying to waddle away you are you begin to glow with a purple light um, as uh, somebody um, casts uh, uh, fairy fire on you. And you hear uh, a voice in your head. I don't want to hurt you. We just want to ask you some questions. And I want you to make one more dexterity. Uh, this time, just make a dexterity check. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, that's a one. <laughs> okay. Um, you are grabbed from behind. And picked up as uh, a very tall man, one of the witch-like 
hands that you didn't see picks you up and kind of looks at you. If I didn't know better, I'd think somebody had cast an awakening spell on one of the carnival prizes. You very clearly have lost your people. I'll make sure that you're taken care of. And you are held close as they begin very quickly with strides that are equal to about probably 10 of your strides. Uh, they just begin walking very quickly through the carnival. And... Um, okay. As Fig is, is being taken, he looks around and he is going to... He wants to cast prestidigitation and he wants to create like a little symbol on the ground. If he can. Sure. Yeah. He's right. going to make like a little glowing kind of. I would almost imagine like it looks like his head. Like it's just like this little square with like some eyes. <laughs> Fig just literally pulled one of the the trick of one of the hobbits, leaving behind the clasp when they get yeah. taken by the Urukai. Yep. Oh. What does it look like? I'm sorry. Fig's head. Fig's head? Looks like, yeah. Yeah. Like a glowing crayon drawing of Fig's head. Got it. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, and uh, so as you leave this, Mark on the ground you just watch as this mark gets further and further away and you see people walking past just hoping that they don't step on it and that's where we're going to take our break so we're going to go ahead and we are going to take about a 10 minute break uh please do stick around uh as we see what happens on the other side of this break we'll be back in just a few more minutes And we're back. <laughs> Not quite the same as coming back from break last week, eh, Katie? <laughs> Not quite the same. <laughs> oh. That's what I get for asking questions. Yep. <laughs> the question is, what were we talking about that prompted that question? Never mind, I digress. So, we're playing D&D. The Witchlight Carnival. Uh, at this point, Cantriel and Drown and Rolo and Thorgarn, you have taken off looking for Fig and Talmud. Mm -hmm. And as you are walking back towards the um, towards the entrance to this little area that you're in, this portion of the carnival. You end up um, in an area, uh, as you kind of go through that gate, Drown, Cantriel, uh, Rolo, Thorgarn is completely about to head in the wrong direction. Uh, you step through the gate, Thorgarn, and you start to walk, and you realize everybody else is heading off to the left, and you went to the right. Um, because the three of you noticed that there is a a wagon kind of set off to the side it's roped off with these velvet ropes and there is a uh very large black panther looking uh creature sitting on the ground with enormous um butterfly wings and children around it. And sitting next to it is Fig. Fig, you were picked up by the witch light hand and you were brought to the lost and found. And you were placed with these other children and this very large uh, displacer beast by the name of 
Durlegron, who has very patiently been allowing the children to climb up on on top of her and sort of slide down her back and um, just playing around. And so that's the scene you see as you come walking up on this area with uh, with Fig sort of in the midst of these other children. Fig! Fig looks up and just kind of waves. Hey, there you are. You okay? Fig nods. Uh, where's, and, where's Talmud? Fig holds up like this box with these four figures in it. Rolo looks in. Rolo is not the smallest. Yeah, you see a very tiny, uh, very tiny Talmud inside the popcorn. Is he napping on the popcorn? Uh, yeah, I like to think that he's completely fallen asleep inside I there. The Big old distended belly. Yep. <laughs> One arm around the the clay, uh, Mister Witch figure. One arm around the uh, the little wind up fig, or excuse me, Hermes. That every once in a while, his one of his feet just goes. Tch, tch. Yes, his his face. He doesn't have a beard uh, because he's a childlike, but he has a faux beard because he's got popcorn butter all over his face and salt is. Crystals of salt are just sticking to the butter. So he has a salt beard inside this tiny popcorn container. You see this, this uh, displacer beast um, looking at all of you and kind of turning to look at fig. Ah, does this little mechanical being belong to you yes thank you for keeping figs safe the witch light hands were concerned when they saw them wandering without supervision they thought it best to bring them to Durlegong. thanks for <laughs> keeping an eye on them yes. it is my pleasure fig you have just noticed um, where some of the kids are wandering around. Uh, there is a um, kind of by the tail of Durlegron, uh You just noticed a ball that is made entirely of mirrors. Yeah, that catches Fig's attention right away. Shiny, reflective. So Fig is going to turn from from the the rest of them and waddle towards that ball. Fig, 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 go, Fig, go, bye, bye. Uh, Durlegron continues to speak with uh, the others of you, mostly to you, Drown. It is best if you are going to be responsible for all of these children that you keep an eye on them you should all stay together yeah we were we were doing pretty good at staying together um and then then you know just one one moment everything kind of flipped and then i think some of us ran off in different directions we'll uh, we'll try to be more careful about that this was because of the pig mask lady yeah, that was part of it. A pig masked lady. Yes, mm -hmm. the, the little girl with the pig mask in the mirrors. I know who you are talking about. Him. You do? I know of them. Are they, uh, do they work at the carnival? Or? We don't talk about them. Oh. They took someone. They, they took someone into the mirror. They did not take anyone where they did not wish to go. Okay. Very well. You may take your companion. And you see she kind of looks to where you were, Fig. And, uh... 
you're heading for this mirrored ball and uh yeah it's it's in your hands you know it's a good sized ball you see as you pick it up you see dozens of tiny fig faces reflected back at you all of you watch as suddenly Durlegrand's posture changes and you hear this <sighs> snarling growl and one of their tentacles uh, that is holding up the uh, that the butterfly wings are sort of attached to suddenly snaps out and flicks you fig and you go tumbling ass over tea kettle backwards as the uh, tentacles tentacle wraps around this mirrored ball and the head of Durlegrand gets low near you do not touch this and you all watch as she just struck fig yeah i immediately get between fig and and Durlegrand. she Say, bears hey. her teeth at you <sighs> it's okay okay we'll fig shouldn't out. have touched your ball that's fine Keep your bits to yourself. She, or we're going to have a problem. She suddenly looks at you and she looks at Fig and she, you see her ears immediately lay flat in a, not backwards in like a, um, I don't know cats aggressive. that well, but not in the aggressive way, but in the sort of to the side and you see her face sort of sag, her whole body sort of sags and the tentacle sort of curls and brings the ball in close and she sort of grabs it with uh with two of her six paws and kind of pulls it forward and you see as she sort of curls around it and she kind of looks down and when she looks back at you her eyes are sad who does the ball belong to <sighs> this Ball is the favorite ball of my cub, Star. Something tells me Star's not here, considering your reaction. <sighs> I've lost my cub. The irony is not lost on me. You mean like you lost it as you misplaced it? Did it? Did they pass, or like did somebody take them? Star vanished three years ago from the carnival without a trace. I nearly tore this place apart looking for them. Okay, I I'm really sorry to hear that, but just earlier today we saw someone vanish into a mirror following this pig masked girl leaving their 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 fiance behind didn't say goodbye didn't say anything just went but my so, star would never go anywhere with a stranger I, would they look we saw someone look like somebody else who stole someone else's voice right the this is fey magic everywhere all around. You are not so ordinary children. That is very true. We're not technically children, we just look at... Yeah. I... Feels like a little more than look at, but yeah. <laughs> hey, she... do you think the, uh, the, the cub could have gone into the mirror? Yeah, I think the cub might have gone into the mirror. You see her kind of tilting her head and she so maybe maybe can you tell us a little bit about these people in the pig masks? Mm. I don't know that your cub's disappearance has anything to do with this, but this is, you know, a story of someone going missing right on the heels of seeing someone going missing. So but the ball is made of mirrors, like the mirror that the man disappeared in. And the ball is made of mirrors. Maybe somebody with the pig masks tricked Star into the mirror. The star like mirrors? Star loved this mirror ball. 
and Star loved um, the Hall of Illusions. I think that's where it happened. It was in the Hall of Illusions. Hmm. I tore that place apart. I had to replace several the mirror. mirrors. We, we followed right after and tried to go in, and it was just glass. We couldn't follow. And the pig-masked girl just sort of waved at us, and they disappeared. Sow pig. Sow pig. Right. Sow pig is one of the weird three. The weird three. <sighs> Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. I have long suspected they made a deal that allows right. them a free reign to the carnival. That doesn't seem right. They deal with people who try to sneak into the carnival. They are not supposed to interfere with ticketed customers or witch light hands. But I have heard of strange things happening in the fair wild of late. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe it's something is up with. I must speak with Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. I think we need to talk to Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. Now, somebody that we talked with earlier said that they're not seeing any visitors or talking to anybody. Do you, do you think you can talk to them? I think that they will listen to what I have to say. Well, what do, what do you, you think? need to talk with them about? Have they stolen something of yours? Uh, oh, yeah. They no. stole something from a new friend of ours. Maybe. Yes. Well, no. They they have information that a new friend of ours needs, and, and that we need. Turns out that we need too. Yeah. And I'm starting to think a lot of this stuff is connected, even if people don't realize it. I have Fig heard. Pulls out the little figurine <laughs> with <the> Talmud hanging <laughs> off the end, <laughs> <laughs> and just looks. Um, at the at the beast and just staff area. That is Mr. Witch. That is a fine likeness, if a bit small. Yes, they are most wall. likely in the staff area. Are you staff? Can you get in there? I will speak with them, but I will not be able to speak with them until after the carnival. I have a duty here at the Lost and Found. <sighs> Dang it. Well, gang, should, I mean, should we just try to go talk to them? We can always try. That's kind of where I'm at. You can certainly try to talk to them. If you see them, tell them that Derlegron gives her endorsement. Sure, will do. Okay, well, uh, hey, thanks again for keeping an eye on, on Fig and Talmud and, uh, and Hermes. It Appreciate it. It is literally my job. Oh, yeah. Lost and found. <laughs> and the other tentacle sort of comes down gently and just lays down next to you, Fig, as she lowers her head. I am sorry that I lashed out at you. Fig reaches out a hand and kind of scratches right behind uh, De La Grande's ear and kind of rests his head against the side with it, like a quick little hug before waddling over uh, to the others. You, 
you would hear Durlegrand just give the very faintest hint of a purr. And then suddenly she sort of sits up and says, Well, you are no longer lost, Fig, therefore you must go. And then she turns her attention to uh, the other children that are in there. There's just two other children. Um, but she, you see as she sort of, with her two front paws, just sort of rolls the mirrored ball back and forth between them. And she'll look at the kids, and then she kind of glances down at the mirrored ball. And you just see that slight droopiness, that sort of sagging of the shoulders as she looks at the ball. Um. Hey. Question. What does a uh, star look like? Oh, right. Good idea. Star. Well, three years ago, Star was a mere kitten. If they have gone to the Feywild, it could be a kitten still. Or Any? they could be at the end of their life. Any um, noticeable markings, perhaps? Star was named for the patch of white fur on her forehead that resembles a star. I have seen no other of our kind that look like them. Tell you what. In our uh, wanderings, because I have a feeling we're going to be wandering around here for a bit. If we happen to come across Star, we'll do everything we can to bring her back. I dare not hope. But I cannot even voice the gratitude. I would feel if you did such a thing. We got to keep hoping. Good thinking, Cantriel. Yeah, I do that every so often. Now all we have to do is find a displacer beast kitten with a star forehead in the Feywild. This will be easy. And and a man. Uh, was he halfling? Gnome. Yep. What are gnome? Yeah, gnome. they were they were gnomes, weren't they? Or were they? I think they're halflings. I, th I halflings. thought they were halflings. They were halflings. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The gnomes were the uh, were, were the snow cone purveyors. The snow, right. the snow cone. Vendors, snow cone sharks, snow cone sharks. <laughs> um, Rolo, Rolo kind of nods, and there's this really loud rumbling noise, and she claps her hands over her tummy and looks up. Hungry? Her eyes are huge. <laughs> it appears as though your little friend is hungry. Might I recommend the feasting orchard? You might. All right. Uh, should we go get some lunch and then see if we can find Mr. Witch and Mr. Light? Yes. That would be very good. We're all very hungry. All right. Let's go get some food. Everybody stay together this time. Let's try not to do that thing we do. As you, <laughs> as you begin heading towards the... Uh, towards the feasting orchards, um, the, uh, um, you notice that again, Thorgar, and this seems very familiar to you, uh, people are looking around and kind of looking in the direction of where over by the, um, where the swans, uh, in the lake were and you can hear a commotion off in that direction and you all see as um somebody comes running through the crowd and they look familiar they look very familiar but their clothes and their face and their hair are brightly colored as candlefoot comes running through the crowd and uh even as he's moving further and further into the crowd you do see that the color seems to sort of be draining away but it 
does not take away from his joy whatsoever as he's running up to people saying, she said yes, she said yes, so oh my word, she said yes, Palasha and Candlefoot are to be married. And he's running up and down, up and down, and he goes, all of a sudden he stops. And he begins to suddenly, he almost pantomimes like he's flailing backwards against something. And he leans forward and does the walking into a wind. And then suddenly he grabs at his chest and he just goes. <laughs> and then he goes and points at all of you and then comes running up to all of you. It was you, wasn't it? Uh, yep. You yes, found my voice. You returned it. I was able to go and ask Palasha if she would marry me. And she said, yes, we shall be married in the morning. I'm kidding. It takes wow. much longer to marry. I was going to say, to plan not, a wedding. not wasting any time there, huh? <laughs> it, takes a, it takes some time to plan a wedding. And yeah, fair enough. You would also notice that earlier, while th a thunderstorm threatened to uh, impede upon the carnival and the festivities, the clouds have parted and brilliant starlight is visible up above and where you had heard arguments breaking out from time to time within the carnival goers, the music seems to be picking up in pace. Uh, people seem happier all around. You see all up and down the midway, more and more people are winning prizes. Um, everybody is having a good time as the announcement of Candlefoot and uh, Palasha's engagement has improved the mood of the carnival overall. Yeah, it seems like downers hit really hard here. <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't know. Have any of us won any prizes yet? Yeah. Oh. It holds up that little, like, uh, fairy dust packet that he got oh, and kind of cool. holds it and wiggles it. <laughs> He got the prize. So we're gonna kind of like poke at the at the bag. The heavy. No, it's full of dust. He just kind of looks at it and kind of like shakes it. I imagine just like a few little specks drop off and kind of glitter uh, onto uh, Thorgarn's hand. He tries to shake it off. <laughs> well. I think maybe after we get food and after we talk to you know the the people, then then maybe we try and earn prizes. Okay. Uh, sure. As as you're talking, you make your way towards the far end. Uh, you see the entrance to um the feasting orchard. Um, and you see just off to the right of that, you see those giant dragonflies that people are riding on. Um, but just incredibly up-tempo music and happiness is coming from this area. You smell the strong scent of flowers and mead and berry pies. Um, you hear fig from inside the popcorn container. You hear this sort of... <laughs> as Talmud sort of peeks up I smelled something and uh, you see uh, carnival hands on stilts walking through the orchard picking fruit from the trees uh, there's all kinds of musicians playing drums and pipes and and lutes and harps and everything else and they're singing and dancing and there's just massively inordinate amounts of custard everywhere. Um, as uh, there are custard pies being offered all around here uh, to get just a taste 
because there is an announcement that in just a few moments, the fairy cake eating contest will begin. Open well, go, to anybody. Well, I would like to enter. <laughs> you are such a tiny little person. How many fairy cakes could you eat? Rollo will surprise you. That'll be one ticket punch if you wish to enter the fairy cake eating contest. She pulls out her ticket and holds it out with both hands. So Rollo's participating. Um, I'm going to make a judgment call. Fig, yeah. from inside your popcorn container uh tiny talmud is holding a very tiny ticket up and waving it back and forth uh and just going custard custard um rolla reaches out and scoops him up and sets him on her shoulder oh yeah <laughs> the uh ticket taker looks pulls out a monocle puts it on and peers and then reaches in and pulls out another slightly smaller monocle and then pulls out one more. <laughs> ah, yes. Well, give me one moment and holds up their ticket punch and reaches in. Where is this? Ah, yes. Here we go. Pulls out a wand and taps their ticket punch, which immediately shrinks down to very small. They lean forward and just kind of hold, hold still. And then just give a wave and their ticket punch goes back to full size as they punch Talmud's ticket. Now, would anybody else like to join? What about you? And they kind of lean up. Uh, this is a, um, a human man, uh, but he's very short uh, at around four and a half feet tall um as he from crouching down at rollo and and talmud leans up and just keeps looking up at you drown what about you little little man he kind of looks between the the ticket taker and the and the custard tarts and, and says oh I, I was gonna but I, I think i'm just gonna keep an eye on everybody this time thanks though very well. What of your friends? And looks at you, Thorgarn, and Cantriel, Thorgarn? and Fig. Cantriel, what do you think? Fig? No. <laughs> Fair enough. No, thank you. He just points to his non-existent mouth that he has. All right. <laughs> uh, he looks at you, Fig, and he goes, hmm. And he reaches into a pocket and he kind of, as he reaches into his side pocket, he kind of holds, leans down and holds it open in a way, Fig, that you can see inside that there's nothing in his pocket. And then he goes, hmm. Hmm. And he reaches back into the pocket. And as he does so, he pulls out a sticker. It is a sticker of a custard pie. And he takes it, and he says, hold out your hand. It does so, like, right away, very eagerly. He places it in your hand, and he says, you need only scratch this and hold it up to your nose area and sniff it, and you will smell the custard pie. Big look takes it. It's kind of, like, hunched over it. Looks down, scratches it. Absolutely smells straight up custard pie. You have one custard pie scratch and sniff sticker. Yeah, then Fig like stands up straight, but his hand is still just like attached to his face as he just keeps like <laughs> smelling it as he as he's like wa walks back over to drown in the others. <laughs> He who will hold it up to drown. <laughs> wow. Smells like custard pie. That's really cool. 
And uh, you hear, I got to ask this because I've been wondering this since last week. Cantriel, what is little Cantriel's passive perception? Twelve. Wow. Is that like half of what it normally is? It's normally 22, yeah. <laughs> I would say it's still enough for you to hear Tiny Talmud's voice saying, Don't worry, Cantriel. I'll eat enough for both of us. That checks out. <laughs> it's not how that works, but all right, it's the thought that counts. Go get him. <laughs> all right. Uh, the rest of you, as the contest is about to begin, um, you are uh, treated to um, offerings of custard pie and fruit and beverages. Nobody will offer you mead because you all appear to be children. Um, but uh, wonderful fizzy drinks and um, other delightful confections are available to all of you. As Tiny Tomwood and Rolo, uh, Thorgarn, were you participating or not? No, he'll 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 stick to you know eating. You know, he already had the snow cone, so he's got to you know be be careful. So he's going to have some water and some fruit, and I kind of just sit off to the side. Um, all right. Well, there's several others that are lined up at this, on this raised platform at the front and you are all given little bibs, uh, a place is set for tiny Talmud next to you, Rolo. Um, as you are told that the goal here is to take each of these fairy cakes and you see these small glazed cupcakes that are filled with berry custard um the goal is to eat as many of these as you can in 60 seconds and uh yeah uh you are going to you are able to uh, start eating the cakes when they hold up their hand and they say three, two, one. And you see all around you people begin. Hur, 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 hur. Um, Rolo taps into her childhood in the cobalt clutch where it was so difficult to actually get food because every all the little babies were going at it for the going at the food at the same time and so it was it was kind of like uh a scramble to stuff your face as fast as you could before anybody else ate the food you wanted okay what is your constitution modifier plus zero okay so you dig in and you start devouring uh, these fairy cakes, just grabbing them and just shoveling them in, grabbing the next one, shoveling it in. How many are you going to, uh, are you going to go for initially? It, it takes oh, oh, approximately oh three seconds to safely eat, um, a cupcake. Um, she is going mindless face stuffer. Okay. It, it's a type of undead, but she's she's going to uh, uh, emulate it as much as she can. You get on your third, you finish up your third cupcake. Mm -hmm. And as that third one hits and you start reaching for the fourth one, you hear in your gut... <laughs> Um, you will need to make a constitution saving throw as you okay. eat this fourth one. Meanwhile, next to you, um, as you are reaching for your fourth cupcake, uh, tiny Talmud is just finishing his fifth cupcake. Go ahead and make constitution saving throw. 19. 
Uh, what are all of you doing? Are you cheering them on? Are you watching passively? Big has taken out his little uh, book, his spell book, and gone to a blank page. And then Crayon has written uh, Go Rolo and uh, Talmud. But the R is backwards and all that as he like is raising it up. All right. What about the rest Drive of you? I've got some food, so he's got like, I don't know, turkey leg or something and is <laughs> kind of pounding on a table and cheering them in between bites. I like to imagine that you have uh, a turkey leg, but it looks very much like our uh, um, hammer die emote. Um, and it's like that scene in the anime where uh, you're just sitting there with that big smile on your face and you take a bite, rip off of it. And every time you take a bite, nothing's gone from it. Uh, and Fig sitting there cheering, holding up the sign, and people all around are ah! Cantriel and Thorgarn. What are the two of you doing? Thorgarn would be would be cheering, uh, probably more for Rollo and giving sidelong glances at at uh, Talmud. You did it before I did. I know. I know. It's your own name. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You you broke the seal. Now I'm going to do it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and Cantriel. Cantriel is watching everyone else around in the crowd. She's she's feeling suspicious of people and things. Okay. I'll have you make an investigation check. Okay. As you are just keeping an eye on everything. Happening oh, around. Trail, I know. 19. Okay. <laughs> so because of the because of the cheering of your friends, Talmud and Rolo, you can make your constitution saving throw with advantage. I got a 19. All right, you get a fourth one down, no problem. Talmud is on a sixth one, no problem. Um, I'm going to have you do this just a couple more times. Uh, just make a couple more, two more saves. Um, I'm rolling for Talmud with the... Uh, regular or at advantage? Uh, at advantage, because your friends are cheering for you. Yay! Uh, it's a 17 for the second one. All right. And for the third one, an 18. So 17, 18, 19. Okay. Now, Talmud is slowing down a bit as you are continuing to shovel these in your mouth. Um, I'm going to have you and Talmud make opposed constitution checks. Okay. I'm going to do it as... Uh, yeah, we're going to do it as a, uh, just a straight up constitution check opposed. I'm rolling in the roller. So anybody that's in, whoops. At regular or advantage? Uh, this one will be at regular because your friends are cheering for both of you. Mm. 19. <laughs> so... You are rapidly gaining, um, and you see Tiny Talmud with just a massively distended belly. He he can't even reach over and get the next uh, cupcake, so he takes out his little foam like Nerf uh, Gerta Brelne, and he's just oh, kind of sure. going like this, trying to hook into the cupcake, and he just Rolo goes will reach as he, over and push it to him. He. Oh, uh, uh, and you just see him kind of licking the frosting and custard off of Gerta Brilne. And he sticks his hand into the custard. Uh, uh, I shouldn't have eaten that the popcorn. The popcorn, uh, get it away. Uh, oh, oh. Don't puke. Don't puke. It disqualifies you. And uh, when you rolled a 19, he rolled yes. an 8. Oh no! <laughs> um, oh no! And he just rolled a nine for the saving throw against uh, 
you just see him turn and he leans to the side behind uh the edge of one of the little little tins that the cakes were in and you just hear this little high pitched ralphing sound coming from I'm not going to make the sound or anything but oh, no. uh um yeah Talmud has just lost his custard uh well, I could have phrased that better but <laughs> I said what I said. Uh, oh, I just realized how bad that was. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, as Rolo, you are being hailed as the victor of the uh, fairy cake eating contest. And Rolo, you are um, you are being presented with your prize. The uh, the person running the contest comes over and says, now, here, and they have on a plate, this is like the, the fairy cake that would be used for the marketing shots. It's like perfectly decorated. Uh, and they bring it up and, and somebody comes running up and they've got a little pink box and they place this fairy cake inside the tiny box and they close it and they wrap it up with a bow and tie it. This is your very special fairy cake. When you eat this whole cupcake, you will turn invisible for one hour. It's basically a potion of invisibility in cupcake form. Cake of invisibility. As this award is being presented to Rolo, Cantriel, you notice in amongst the crowd and all the singing and dancing and merrymaking, there are three individuals that are slinking about. And every once in a while, one of them will touch somebody on the shoulder. And suddenly they'll forget the lyrics to the song they're singing. Another one will reach out and uh, just graze their fingers across somebody's uh, back. And suddenly you hear them saying, I... I don't remember where I live. I've forgotten my home. Um, one of them you see is uh, a Goliath woman uh, that is there wearing a brightly colored pair of uh, wings. And this one is relatively close to you. Uh, Drown, make a perception check real quick. Ten. Drown, you don't hear this, but Cantriel, you hear as a figure, what looks like a little girl, you just see her from behind, she's got pigtails, um, walks by this Goliath woman and for just a moment reaches out like she's going to take her hand and she just touches her hand and the woman looks around and looks down at her hand and then she turns to her friend uh, who is a, a, a human man and says I don't remember my name the figures that you see slinking in and about this group working their nefarious magic uh, look like these three individuals. Oh, pig mask! As the girl who just stole the woman's name turns, she looks right at you, Cantriel. She is wearing the mask of a pig. 
What do you do, Cantriel, as you see all of these figures? Uh, it takes in every last detail of each of them. Like, burning their images into her memory. And makes a point to look at them directly. But she's not saying a thing. You... Here next to you, Cantriel... A woman's voice that says that's best not to interfere. Maybe not interfere, but know who's around you. They have free reign of the carnival. And there's nothing that can be done about it. But why? That's a bit of a story. Gather your friends. I'm going to tell you a tale. By the way, my name is Eliwick Tumblestrom. And you see a little gnomish woman. I don't know if you can see this very well. I forgot to put the digital picture up. I will share this next week. Uh, but you see... A, uh, a gnomish woman, um, with her, uh, um, I want to say Lear. I don't know if that's what that is. Uh, loot, I think. Loot. Thank you. I knew we had an L in it. Uh, but <clears throat> she, she just says, you and your friends are on the right track, but there's so much more going on than you know. Gather them up. And I will tell you everything. And that's where we're going to end tonight's session. Real quick, it was Eliwick Tumble what? Tumblestrum. Thank you. Yeah, I'll put it uh, here in the chat for you. Eliwick. Whoops, not Tubble. Tumblestrum. <laughs> Uh, and she's in your current state, Cantriel. She's probably about your size. She's a, mm -hmm. a gnomish woman. Um... But I would also say Cantriel because uh, Bard recognizes Bard. She's she's a Bard, uh, very clearly. Um, but yeah, that's where we're going to end tonight's session. We will be back next week with our next fourth week. session. Uh, as it appears, strange things are afoot at the Feylight Carnival. And uh, finally, everybody's all back together again um we'll see we'll see if uh talmud is with us next week i'm very pleased that i made it through my first session in a very long time without screwing up the names and especially pleased that you messed up the names <laughs> Ted. Yeah, I, I got you know part of a syllable out and corrected myself but yeah i'm happy that you know everyone can, can delight in <laughs> not just you screw up hey there's there's been more than one occasion where, uh, especially tonight, where I thought I said the wrong name, but nobody called me on it. I'm like, okay, I must have got it right. So I think I double corrected in my head. Um, I do want to let everybody know uh, that, first off, you can tune in tomorrow night to Nerdarchy Live, where you will catch myself and Ted... Uh, along with our friends Fragonator, Asa, Robin, and I believe we have somebody new joining us. Um, Carlos will be joining us in Untraditionally Arcane, uh, GM'd by the Incredible Ted, and we are all playing Untraditional Wizard Classes. I am Ordo Wonderbeard, the Beardomancer. Um, it is a, it is an absolutely fun group that we play, uh, once a month. Uh, that game is happening tomorrow. Um, and then, uh, tune in on Monday night for Scribes and Scrolls, the Candlekeep Mysteries. Uh, we are on session 32. I totally missed it that we played our 31st session on the 31st of January. Uh, not that it would have meant anything other than being able to call that out, but I didn't recognize it until after we had played. 
Um, what about the rest of you? Are is anybody else got any any place they're going to be appearing? Katie this sunday is the return of d4 uh, we are going to be airing it's a pre-recorded episode but it is going to be an amazing one it's uh clan Vetterock going into the star mounts to retake the mines with v and it is so good y'all it it's a really great game so um that's this sunday at 7 p.m eastern standard time 4 p.m pacific on twitch.tv slash d4 rpg Nice. Uh, anybody else got any anything? Yeah. M. Uh, on the ninth, we're gonna be on Big Bearded Nerd yes. for the final episode of Silent Sky, which is a Call of Cthulhu game I've been running. Yes, and to go along with that, it is the not only the final episode of that Mythos Tale, it is the final. RPG stream on Big Bearded Nerd. But fear not, because all of the streams from Big Bearded Nerd, including Mythos Tales and J. Neofet's Star Wars games, they're all coming here to Mini Terrain Domain. Uh, Dwight the Big Bearded Nerd will be producing those. Um, and we will continue running the once a month Mythos Tales. Uh, I'm not going to tell you yet, after M's game next month, or the month after when our next mythos tale comes, we've got a surprise for you and it's going to be cool. Um, but yeah, those will be happening here. Uh, we also have next Tuesday is the, uh, every other Tuesday, Jay Neofet runs salt legends of salt marsh, uh, which is one half of a unique game. He runs where, Legends of Salt Marsh on MTD takes place in the village of Salt Marsh, and every other Wednesday on Wayward of the Emporium, Emporium of the Wayward Gamer, he runs Salt Marsh Legends, which takes place in the city of Salt Marsh 100 years later. The events of the one affect the other, and vice versa. So it's a really unique uh, game that he's running, and we're happy to host part of that here. Um, and, uh, yeah, as we get ready to head out, uh, just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who joined us tonight in chat. Thanks to unmade gaming for the raid. Uh, thanks to those, uh, who, uh, new followers. Thanks to dice on ice RPG and goblin Katie for gifting out the tiered one subscriptions, uh, earning five more domain dice, uh, for all of you. Um, I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody in chat, especially if you're one of those people lurking in the background, you don't want to participate in chat. We appreciate you all the same. We're glad you're here and we hope you enjoy the show. Um, I just want to remind everybody that we are a TTRP GIF slash Robo Goblin Stan, uh, place here. Um, just felt like saying that. Um, and finally a huge Thank you to these amazing players. I'm so glad I get to play uh, D&D with all of you amazing humans every uh, week. So thank you, as always, to V, Dan, M, Ted, Katie, and even though he's not here, he's been with us in chat this whole time, Jeremy, uh, without whom it would just be me talking to myself for a couple of hours. Uh, we are going to, as we go, get ready to get out of here, we're going to go ahead and read CB. Looks like CB's playing some Dead by Daylight. Um, so I'm going to set up a, a raid uh, for for that. So please stick around to, um, uh, to help us raid our friend CB, Critical Bard, over there. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and end this stream the same way we end every stream. And you can say it with me if you want. <laughs> and butts. <laughs>